Hello friends, today I'll be making an ice mermaid for Mermaid. I've seen loads of incredible dolls, illustrations and art pieces and I last minute decided I wanted to join in as well. If you enjoy this video, please give me a like and consider subscribing. It really makes me happy and gives my channel a boost, so thank you in advance. I have this really busted up Torilei that didn't have arms as well. I stole a couple of arms from one of the fake Widona spiders that I brought off AliExpress in order to replace um, a lot of arms that I've lost from other dolls because it's a cheap way of doing so. I was given this doll in part of a swap box with another artist. I asked her for her busted up dolls so she sent me her busted up dolls um, and it didn't come with a head so I'm looking at the heads that I have now to decide which ones I want. So this Draculaura and Applewhite are both fake from AliExpress. I'm not sure who this is, she's fake from AliExpress as well and I think she's too big for the body for this build to be honest. I also have this DC Superheroes Girls and she's way too big for this body. I think I might try her on a 27 centimeter Obitsu. Um, because the uh, Gulia and Frankie aren't um, smiling, I narrowed it down to them. I think Frankie again was still too big for this doll and so I decided in the end to go with Gulia. She used to always be my favourite but I haven't used her for a really long time. Um, so actually I was quite intimidated because her eye shape is kind of different from what I've been doing quite recently so I was pretty worried that I wouldn't be able to fit into the mould. I came up with the idea of how to change this um, busted up doll into a mermaid by myself and just thought I'd give it a go and it worked out so well so I really wanted to share it so that anybody else could do it too. So I'm going to cut just above the knee on both sides using my Dremel tool. I'm making a recess here to hide the wire in. Um, I used a lot of inspiration from Delightful's mods here and so I'm now drilling holes for the wires to go through. I'm drilling through the top of that knee joint as well. We're going to keep the knee joint so that the fin has um, one part, point of articulation there and the hips will also articulate. So I'm threading the wire through here to um, create an armature to create some strength. This is very, very f flexible wire, but it will help with strength before we get the epoxy sculpt and the glue on. I forgot to sand off the underwear before I got here, so I'm just using a nail file to sand off most of it um, before I put anything else on, just to make sure it's done. I wanted to talk about these files I bought um, from the hobby store I go to because they were game changing for me. They're all different shapes, so they're absolutely perfect for getting into little recesses. Um, they were dirt cheap as well, like 250 yen, I'll link them down below and I'll try and find a couple of different resources from them because honestly they're just such a help and you just wash them off so you don't have to chuck them away like with a nail and memory board or with sandpaper. I needed to make the hole in the knee joint bigger. I made it first with a 2mm drill bit and now I'm just going back in with a 3mm so that I can get the wire through twice to hold it on. Um, more stably. I realised here that the movement of her legs was um, encumbered by like the her, her butt so I needed to sand kind of like a thong shape in so that her legs would bend backwards once her knees were held together. I, I felt like this was really important for my mermaid because I think there's often an image of a mermaid with her like her tail bent back a little bit so I really wanted to make sure that my doll could pose like this. I just wanted to say something a little bit about safety. Um, in my videos I'm not great with safety. Please be much more cautious than I am. I do injure myself quite a lot. Um, I think if you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen that I had to super glue my finger together um, a few weeks ago. Honestly I'm not very careful. Please please be more careful than I am. In my last project I used quite a lot of two-part epoxy glue and it was an absolute nightmare so I decided to try sticking this together with um, uh, gel super glue. Obviously it didn't work because these um, surfaces weren't completely flat so I threaded the wire through um, and then I used uh, the two-part epoxy again. I used um, a 
different kind, I don't know what brand it is, it's a Japanese one I think, but I had a lot more success with that this time than I did with the Gorilla Glue that I was using last time. This was the first time I tried to make a mermaid like this, so the order's a little bit weird. I remembered here that I needed to cut her foot off. If I was working in a better order, I would have done it while I had the Dremel out the first time. Here I dripped the um, glue over the top of like the joint, and it wasn't a super strong hold, but it was strong enough to hold while I got the epoxy sculpt on. If you use this method to make your own mermaid, then this isn't necessary, but I'm cutting these holes to be able to add some fabric to make like frilly kind of fins up on her thighs. I'm using my two millimeter drill bit and then I'm gonna widen the hole with my three millimeter drill bit um, just to drill a hole into like the foot part of her fin to be able to add some wires as an armature for her fin. Again, sorry about the order, so this is kind of just kind of how my brain works. Um, I'm cutting the organza here to add into the holes that I just made to make the frilly kind of thin fins. Um, I was actually kind of just playing around this and this was just a bit of a happy accident so it kind of bunched up in there and um, I really liked the effect that it gave so I just cut um, squares of fabric because I had no idea what was going to happen and I just loved how they turned out. This entire doll was actually kind of just a big experiment and because I've um, tried in the past to use other techniques that um, artists have used in their modifications I think I kind of learned from those past experiences and quite a lot of it went relatively well and I'm really surprised how smoothly this doll went actually. It was um, quite a pleasurable build and I haven't had a nice easy doll for a really long time actually. So just out of frame I added the um, steel wires that will make up kind of the armature of her fin. The steel wires are the silver ones that I'm using and they're quite a lot stronger than the purple wires I use, um, the purple ones being aluminium. I try and buy different colours so that I don't get confused when I'm um, making dolls. So it, if you see my builds uh, I have copper wire that is literally copper colour. My aluminium wire tends to be purple and then my steel wire is silver. So here I'm just sewing this organza to her fin. Again, I didn't really know what I was going to do here. And this, I'm not sure, turned out quite how I'd like it to. It's not as cohesive. Um, I don't think it goes as well with those hip fins. But I did had, have an idea on the train and tried again to change it. And I'm still not sure how I liked the results from that but I think this is definitely something that I'm going to do again in the future so we'll see what I decide to do with the fin that time. So the first pass of epoxy sculpt, I'm really sorry again with safety I don't wear gloves when using epoxy sculpt because I just hate it and I don't have reactions from epoxy sculpt. If you do make sure you wear gloves of course. Of course I mixed the two parts together and then I just filled the part between the legs. If I did this again I'd leave a bit more of a gap um, between like the groin area of the doll and where I filled in because it kind of in uh, inhibited her movement a bit and I would have liked her knees to come up closer to her chest. I think also the hip joint could do with changing so if I do another doll, I'm definitely doing another mermaid so I don't know why I say if, when I do another mermaid I'll um, uh, do updates on this and explain the changes I make. So I'm just fleshing out um, the fin a bit here, so filling in that gap, covering the wires and then because um, the bottom half of the fin, fin tail is a left leg, uh, the muscle's not symmetrical so I'm adding a little bit to the right side of that left leg to um, add a bit of bulk. When I'm using epoxy sculpts I always have water on hand because it really helps to blend it with itself or onto the plastic. I wanted to keep in as much of the sculpting process as I could this time because I think I learned quite a lot. 
So I let that cure overnight and then I'm sanding it back with uh, emery board. This is uh, 100 grit on one side so the smaller the number the coarser the file so start with a smaller number and go to a bigger number to get it smooth. I'm also adding a hole here so that I can add another fin on the back of the um, tail just because I thought it needed a bit more interest on this part of the tail. So we're kind of out of um, um, out of order again here, but um, I had to make the doll in kind of order of curing time because I wanted to make sure that I could get the doll finished in May for Mermaid. So I really wanted to give her a bigger chest um, just because I think quite often in art, mermaids are topless. And so I wanted the option of her being topless and I don't really like the way that Monster High breasts look um, as they're topless. I don't think they look very natural. I don't think they fit the body shape, especially because the doll is um, like the, the body is so long. Obviously she's not proportional in any way but um, I did want to give her bigger breasts so here I'm trying to make the um, doll look natural for a naked chest because um, she isn't going to be wearing clothes. I did make an optional top for her which I, I quite like as well I enjoy this doll um, both ways that I did her and I took photos of her with a top on and with a top off and I know some people are bothered by doll nudity so I am going to split the photos up so at the end I'll do doll top first um, and then after that I'll put a warning and then um, do doll no top afterwards just in case you don't want to see it or if you're with a younger child I would recommend like a but for over 13s I think this is fine because it is a piece of art and there's so much nudity within art anyway um, but a younger than that I'm not sure if you want to show them so if you are planning on sculpting breasts for your doll um, I would recommend um, making sure to look from all angles because it's so easy to make them uneven not that they need to be identical like I, I'm not about perfect symmetry in dolls anyway um, and then also I think it's really important to use a, a standing knife in between the breasts like a blade to keep them separate because it's really easy to squish them together. I'm also checking that her arm movement won't be inhibited by the breasts that I'm just sculpting now. So I wasn't really sure what to do with this fabric. I wanted it to be frilly like the top fins but it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I um, just kind of gathered and uh, tacked it a little bit to kind of make it into mermaid shape. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the inspiration for the doll uh, while I do the face up like usual. Um, but I thought this kind of went with the theme but it doesn't um, go well with the rest of the fins which was a bit of a shame. I think maybe if they were both similar it would have made more sense but this I'm gonna put down to learning and I'm not I'm not bothered by that. I'll, I, I think I know a way of kind of fixing this but it was too big a fix that I didn't want to commit to um, after having taken all the photos and I had a nightmare with the photos. <laughs> I added more clay to the top of the fin to kind of make it blend with the rest of the tail. I kind of thought about going all the way down like the wires of the tail but then realised that I wouldn't be able to repose her tail after that which I kind of wanted to keep. And then back to sanding again with my 100 grit. Um, because I'm going to put more epoxy sculpt on top of this, it doesn't really matter that I'm not sanding right down to a really smooth grade. So I learnt a lot 
in this build in terms of um, sculpting and I used a trick that I think her name is Chimerian Dolls, I'll put a link, told me. Um, she said use uh, putty and primer and oh my goodness did it completely improve my sculpting game. I'm pretty sure you've seen me use this one before. It's a plastic product and it kind of dries quite quickly. So I just pop it on, use my silicon tool to squish it in. And then once it's dry-ish, it doesn't need to be totally dry, just um, surface dry, you can squish it flat and then just wait for it to completely mm, cure. I don't know how long it takes to cure, just a couple of hours and it's workable. So I'm using this to fill in the gaps that I can see. And then after that, I'll sand it back. Then I spray with a coat of Mr. Primer 1000. Again, I only use Mr. Hobby because it's cheap. So you spray with the primer, sand it back. This buffing block is a 240 grit, by the way, which is quite um, smooth. It's like smooth enough for it, finishing for a doll. Um, because she's then all one color, you can see much more easily where you need to add more product or sand more away. So I think I did um, two or three layers of sanding and priming. And in between there, I'm adding more epoxy sculpts where it needs to be as well. Um, here as well, it was really, really helpful to be able to see those um, mold lines to get those off. Um, so if you are doing a big mod project, then I would definitely recommend using a primer and prime sand prime. I have odds and ends of lots of different colours of hair and I was kind of thinking of going with a natural colour with this hint of green but in the end decided to just go with the natural so I went with honey blonde and the light blonde. This is the can of Kellen I get again. It's actually gone up in price since the corona thing happened but it's still really reasonable. Um, I. Uh, check like against the doll roughly how long I want it and then cut the big chunks um, don't worry the other tails I'll totally use there's at least um, two dolls worth each there and then I as usual I use a hot straightener to um, straighten it before rerouting I made a huge mistake I thought that you could um, curl before rerouting because I have seen curly doll hair before but I did it apparently completely wrong so it turned into this absolute bird's nest um, and I'll show you it at the end it was an absolute nightmare so I had to do it all again anyway um, and it took a good couple of hours to get all the knots out of her hair as well so um, don't do what I did here just straighten and then reroute don't curl then reroute I saw Maria Lazar using a um, clipper to cut her doll's hair, realised I had a clipper and thought I'd give it a go and it's amazing, I'm not going back to scissors anymore, this was so much easier. I scraped the inside of her head with a paintbrush and then I pulled the hair out with a pair of pliers. Then I prep her as usual, except I accidentally picked up nail polish remover without acetone um, and got very confused. Um, I tried for a little bit and then gave up and just grabbed the acetone. Because Scoolia has quite an angular face mould, I find it really useful to go in with a cocktail stick covered in cotton wool, soaked in acetone to just get all those um, corners out. Then I mixed um, acrylic paint in the hair colour and just gave her scalp a couple of coats. I rerouted her off camera and then prepped the doll with a couple of layers of Vallejo Pale Flesh then three coats of Mr. Super Clear. So I said in the last video that I've been kind of struggling with my art and not liking how it's been turning out. And I think I've not been paying enough attention. 
uh, like one of my friends thought I was overthinking it I think I've been underthinking it so this time I made sure to look at a lot of reference pictures of various things so I looked at um, artists that I like both doll and regular artists and I looked at um, photos of real humans so my style isn't completely realistic but I think I do try and go for quite a bit of realism so looking at real photos definitely helped here so at first my idea was to go with like a polluted ocean kind of mermaid but once I rerouted her it just didn't fit and so I was talking to my friend and because she had that fair um, blonde hair my friend was like, what about um, like Norway, like a Norwegian um, mermaid? And she was like, what ocean does she come from? And like, I hadn't really thought of it. I always think of mermaids being tropical, you know. So um, then I thought of um, Norway. So I was like, OK, so I want her to be pale. And then I was like, well, what do I do for her tail? And my buddy um, said, oh, do an upside down mer um, iceberg. And I was like, oh, oh what? And so she sent me some photos of upside down icebergs and it's literally when an iceberg turns over I think and so like icebergs are normally white of course on top but when they get turned over they're like these deep blues and like ceruleans and just absolutely gorgeous colours and I thought it was a really incredible idea so I completely stole it however I've put her links in the description box below she's got a couple of Instagrams she's just started doing doll clothing which I'm really excited to do because we're definitely gonna collaborate um, but she also does um, period costumes as well the surface on this doll was really incredible normally I have to do about 15 layers to get the opacity that I want and I'm so jealous of artists that only have to do a couple of layers and get incredible color payoff but um, with the pastels I was getting just what I wanted because I didn't want it to be too much like you couldn't quite easily build up more if you want it um, and I did want to keep her pretty pale um, but the colour pencils as well I was getting really good payoff and just exactly what I wanted so I think in the end I did um, just three layers of Mr Super Clear in terms of like doing the drawing on her face and usually I do so many more than that like for me it's not a huge deal because Mr Super Clear is absolutely bargainers here but um, if I was outside of Japan that would be just not possible to sustain so I wanted to make her skin look quite natural and like that she's in the cold so I wanted to do her like some splotchy blushing like you see on um, real pale skin and then also I drew in um, some veins as well. I know that Jackie O does this a lot, she does splotchy bus blushing and veins and it always looks stunning on her dolls and I absolutely loved how it turned out on this doll. I'm not sure if I'll do it on all of my dolls but it was just perfect for this one. I knew that I wanted her to have um, very pale eyes as well. Throughout this whole um, face up I was looking at some face ups by BJD artists and um, under their eyes they did wrinkles as well and it looks really pretty on a BJD but obviously a BJD is usually quite a lot bigger than a monster high doll so under her eyes it kind of looks like bags but I don't even mind that I think it looks um, it looks quite interesting I was really really happy with how this doll turned out it just kind of felt like I was stepping in the direction that I wanted to be going in like I felt for so long that I've just been going backwards um, but I took my own advice again and I just try and keep in mind what I know and then try and build on that so I wasn't really sure what to do with um, her eyelashes like because um, she's an iceberg mermaid my friend again same friend said uh, what about white eyelashes and I wasn't sure about it so 
I think I did that on a separate layer so I did her brown lashes on the bottom because I think that's quite subtle and then I did black and brown on the top and what I've started doing um, which I, I've wanted to do for a long time is kind of bring the eyelashes a little bit down to cover um, the eyes that I've drawn and I really like the effect that that gives I was making sure to take the time to um, really look at the doll while I was working as well I don't know how because my workspace is an absolute explosion here but it's still focusing on the doll so don't get it I just used the watercolour effects of my pencils rather than actual watercolours in this face up and I think it was just enough. I used a metallic paint from Mr Hobby um, in that pupils, I think Jackie O does this quite a lot and I think it looks really beautiful. I'm not sure if it quite worked on this doll but I'm glad I tried it. So I used the tiniest paintbrush I own and um, white watercolour to paint in her eyelashes. I did it with watercolour because um, this way if it doesn't look good I can literally just run her face under a tap and wash it all off. You do have to be kind of careful because sometimes I've found that I've not um, sprayed it properly with Mr Superclear. Mr Superclear is a bit um, temperamental sometimes you can um, go overboard with it as as well as under spray so you've got to find a good balance but yeah I could take it off but I, re I liked how it looked in the end so I blushed her body with the same colors that I used on her face because this doll is going to be relatively simple in terms of like clothing I really wanted to try and um, na nail it you know I wanted to make sure that I did the um, best job that I could so again I looked at BJD blushing but obviously again it's on a smaller scale I didn't realize that the um, flesh tone hadn't covered as well as I thought it had but that's okay because um, I'd taken her skin tone quite a lot pinker on her face and so I needed to do the same on her body to make sure that they matched I'm um, blushing and painting a lot lower than I need to because I don't want there to be um, gaps when I paint in her tail colours. On her chest as well I drew um, veins because in um, very pale people you can see uh, veins across people's um, entire bodies. As a very pale person I know this. Um, I blushed her nipples as well and then added colour with um, coloured pencils. I wanted to give her freckles because I just think they're gorgeous. So I watered down some watercolour paints and then used a stiff bristle brush to spray onto the doll's face. I covered her eyes first but then um, took the covering off and I just used a Q-tip to take off any freckles that end up in the wrong place. I find it quite important to take off a freckly moustache because that can make a doll look pretty weird. I did the same with her body. And then I masked off um, the top of her body and I'm just using my airbrush to give a base colour here. I wanted to kind of show you my setup. I made this um, booth myself um, and it was an absolute pain but um, kind of half of the price of a commercial spray booth. I don't have an outside place that I can do this so I wear my respirator and then also have the extractor fan on in here. 
I've learned quite a lot more about airbrushing in terms of like how to look after your um, brush and the paint texture to use so let me know if you want me to cover that um, in more detail in the future. I mixed a darker colour and then added kind of accents to it in kind of a similar pattern that you'd see on um, an upside down iceberg. These are a couple of shells that I made for her headpiece. I have a reference picture of upside down icebergs open on my phone and using my acrylic paint I'm just going to add the details in on her tail. I took the masking off and because it's um, organza that I masked there's quite a lot of bits that didn't get um, painted so I'm just filling in those gaps. Using um, poly gel I made this headpiece but it was an absolute failure so I uh, took it to pieces glued the two pieces together and then used that as a hairpin. So because I do want a totally family friendly version of this doll I decided to make her like an ice crystal top. So again I'm using poly gel and these are big hexagon iridescent sequins um, and I'm making like a base and then I'm using some glittery poly gel to then kind of create the top. So I want this to look a bit like an ice top. I also gave her um, tail especially, and to an extent her body, a um, coat of iridescent airbrush like top coat. It's just got a blue shimmer in it, so that um, is why the tail is so shiny. I absolutely love the um, effect that it gave, almost metallic kind of, and um, because it's on her body as well, it's giving her a shine. I did it on her face too. Um, I kind of like it because it's a little bit of a wet look. I have these absolutely minuscule uh, crystals and I thought they were just too perfect to not add to her top. I'm not even sure if you can see them to be honest. Now that it's totally cured and because I've done it kind of around the sides of her it's like just perfect um, size to pop on and off without um, needing to be held by anything. So I need to use isopropyl alcohol to take off the tacky layer and then I kind of peeled it off the saran wrap. Here you can see the kind of shimmer on her face as well um, and the disaster zone that is her hair. I just scratched the paint out of her hair, hair as well. Um, it doesn't look that bad but it was just so tangly. I really struggled to get her head back on as well. Um, I think Gulia heads might be a bit firmer, I don't know. So I totally recurled her hair, just um, ran a straightener through it and then wrapped it around a paintbrush. So like I said, I'll split the photos into with the top first. So all of these photos now um, until I say we'll have her top on. Because she's a piece of art, um, there shouldn't be an issue uh, with her being topless. Um, like with all art pieces, I think um, nudity is okay on YouTube. and. Um, I wouldn't be demonetized anyway because I'm not monetized. Um, it would just potentially repress the video and I would like people to see this video because I think there are lots of helpful techniques in there that other people can learn from. If you liked it please um, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Like honestly it really gives me like a boost. I know that's sad to say but like it makes me feel really happy when I know that people are enjoying my work and um, to see new people coming to watch okay after this photo we're going to topless so if that bothers you then please click out now um, and thank you for watching until now and I'll see you in the next one yeah so every time um, 
I get new comments, I read all of your comments and I generally uh, reply as well. Um, it really does make me happy. Um, I got a message today saying that somebody had used uh, techniques that I'd shown in my videos um, to create their own doll clothes and it just made me so happy. I love that um, what I'm doing is helping other artists or that I'm inspiring people because I'm inspired so by so many other people as well and the doll community really is pretty cool to be a part of and I've made some incredible friends so I'd love um, if you'd like to stick around that would mean the world to me. So um, stay safe and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you. Bye.